Hello, uh, my name is Kaspers and welcome to another Diving Deep session. And today I'm joined by our support engineer, Edgars, who will tell us about bridge hardware offloading in Microtech routers. Yeah, hello, my name is Edgars. I work at Microtech support team and daily I work with bridges and switches. Today I want to present you a presentation about bridge hardware offloading. Uh, these are the main objectives. I want to teach you about bridge hardware offloading and the packet flow, understand how to configure a bridge with VLAN filtering, show possible layer 2 testing methods and walk through some of the Microtech switching certification questions. So let's start with basics. What is the bridge? Bridge connects multiple LAN segments into one. It is possible to bridge an interface that has a MAC address. For example, Ethernet, wireless, bonding, EOIP, and so on. Bridges can only forward packets by layer 2 MAC addresses. It doesn't look at IP headers. Although you can still configure an IP address on the bridge and route traffic through them. Yeah, but how does the bridge know where to send the packet? That's a great question. Uh, bridges, uh, when receive packets, they look at source MAC, address, source MAC addresses and if the source MAC address is new, it will store it in the host table. It is also sometimes called forwarding database or FDB. Uh, this table can be used afterwards to forward unicast packets. In case bridge, bridge doesn't know how to send the packet or the host is missing, the bridge will flood the packet to the all ports. Uh, okay, can you tell us more about the unicast, multicast, broadcast, all these sure. types? Uh, these are the main traffic types. Unicast means that traffic is sent from one host to another. Uh, multicast means that one host is sending packets to multiple hosts and broadcast means that one host is sending packets to multiple, uh, sorry, to all hosts. All right, uh, so if there are multiple bridges, yes, there might be yeah, a loop, right? Sure, uh, basically uh, a lot of times you have uh, networks with a lot of bridges and this can cause a problem if you create a loop. Uh, because bridges doesn't use any packet timeout, te packet timeout uh, techniques uh, like routers do with time to live, so flooded packets can be actually forwarded in your layer 2 network for a long time and this can create a broadcast storm. It can degrade your network performance or even create a complete network breakdown. To avoid that, Bridges uses spanning tree protocol. It provides the ability to create layer two um, loop-free networks. Okay, so now we know a little bit more about the bridges. Uh, can you show us how to configure a bridge in RouterOS? Sure. In this slide, you can see all the main bridge commands. First, you need to add a bridge interface. Then you can add bridge ports. These ports can be all the interfaces with MAC address. If you don't need to spanning, if you don't want to enable spanning tree, you can disable it with protocol mode none. And you can also disable spanning tree on individual ports with edge setting. And to see uh, all the learn hosts, you can use host print command. Uh, okay, so now we know also that part. Uh, let's move on further. Uh, what is the bridge hardware offload? A great question. Uh, in RouterOS, there are possible uh, two bridge types, the software bridge and the hardware bridge. Software bridge is when packets are forwarded using the CPU. All RouterOS devices support software bridge. However, most of the devices also contains a uh, specialized hardware called switch chip or switch ASIC and this allows offloading some of the bridge functions like packet forward, VLAN filtering to this specialized hardware without consuming any CPU resources. And this can be done at wire speeds. In RouterOS we have named this function bridge hardware offload and different Microtech devices have different switch chips and each switch chip can have a different features. Okay, so here in the slide you also see uh, the block diagram from, uh, from one of our devices. Yeah? And so these block diagrams can actually show you quite a lot about how, how these uh, devices work and how it's all interconnected. And these block diagrams are available for each of our products on the products page, yeah? microtech.com slash product. And uh, 
Well, now we know what the hardware offloading is, but uh, how one can know if the hardware offloading is working actually? Uh, it's quite easy. You just need to go to the bridge port uh, settings and see for the H flag. If the bridge ports have H flag, it means uh, hardware offloading is working. But sometimes you will not see this H flag and it can mean, it can mean that some features like VLAN filtering or IGMP snooping is disabling hardware offload on your particular device. Okay, so different devices have different features. Uh, could you tell us more about what are the main differences between different uh, Switch products? Sure. Uh, in Microtik we have a lot of switches and we can group them in four big categories. Uh, the first one is basic switch chips. Uh, these switch chips are included in most uh, small office, home office routers, like this one, RB4011. Uh, you get basic port switching in the bridge menu. Also, some switches uh, have VLAN filtering, sorry, uh, VLAN uh, support in the switch menu. And recently we have added hardware VLAN support for some of the switches. For example, this one, uh, RB4011 and RB5009. And uh, this uh, hardware offloading is available in Rotros version 7. The next category is CRS 100 and 200 series. These devices are designed mainly for switching. Uh, you can see uh, this one, uh, this is uh, CRS 112. Uh, these switches support advanced features like VLANs, ACL, quality of service, mirroring, traffic isolation. You also get more fine-tuning configuration options. For example, you can modify uh, VLAN headers on ingress and egress ports. However, these switches can be difficult to configure because all the available switching options. Uh, you can port switching. Uh, the port switching is available in the bridge menu and all the switch features are available in the switch menu. Um, the next one is CRS 300 series. These devices are also designed mainly for switching. Hardware offloading works together with bridge features like VLAN filtering, MSTP, bonding, IGMP, and DHCP snooping. Uh, a CRS 300 example is this switch. And yeah, and most configuration is done in interface bridge menu. Uh, these switches are also easier to configure because uh, software bridge and hardware bridge configuration is the same. You also get dual boot feature. Uh, these devices can be booted in router OS and switch OS. And these devices are also having new capabilities. For example, layer three, hardware offloading, multi-chassis link aggregation, and bridge controller and extender. Uh, yeah, finally, we have CSS series. Uh, these devices are also designed for switching, um, but uh, you only get switch OS. Switch OS can be configured only using your web browser. And these devices have switching features like VLANs, ACL, link aggregation, IGMP snooping. Uh, okay, so thank you about uh, explaining differences between different uh, switch groups. Uh, I've sometimes tinkered around with the hardware offloading and uh, well, sometimes when I enable some feature, it stops working. What, or, yeah, what, what's with that? Yeah, basically uh, in this table, you can see the switch chips have different set of features. Sometimes if you enable some feature like VLAN filtering, it will disable hardware offloading. Uh, so before uh, buying your device, check the supported features for each switch chip in the bridge manual. Also, some switches still support VLANs and you can do that in the switch menu. Okay, um, what about the bridge filter rules? Sometimes they don't work. Uh, sure, uh, this is an overview when we add bridge hardware offloading to the existing router OS packet flow. Bridge hardware offloading takes place before the CPU, so packets that are forwarded by the switch can bypass tasks like bridge forward, bridge filters, and even sniffer and traffic control. Uh, okay, and uh, how can the switch uh, 
send packets to the CPU. Uh, yeah, to do that, uh, we need to zoom in into the switching decision block. There you can find a few new elements and logic gates. The switching decision uh, controls all the switching related tasks like host learning, packet forwarding, VLAN filtering and so on. As discussed previously, different switches have different features, so it depends on the switch model. Packets will only go to the switching decision if ingress or egress port is hardware offloaded. Packets can also be sent to the CPU uh, through the switch CPU port. It is a special purpose port for communication between switch ports and CPU. Please note, you, don't, you cannot control uh, any router settings on the switch CPU port except in the switch menu. For example, you cannot add an IP address on this port. Okay, but uh, when does uh, the switch send these packets to the CPU? Uh, it can happen in different scenarios. For example, if a packet destination MAC address matches a bridge MAC address. Um, for example, you send an IP packet to your bridge and this packet will be sent to the CPU. Uh, also, packet might get flooded to the switch CPU uh, because uh, of the broadcast traffic. Uh, also, switch CPU uh, might have learned that some hosts can only be reached from the CPU. For example, if you connect uh, in the bridge hardware offloaded interfaces and non-hardware offloaded interfaces, such as wireless. Also, some devices contain two switch chips, and to forward packets between switch chips, uh, you only can send that through the CPU. Like 4011. Yeah, yeah that's right. And uh, there are two last scenarios. A packet can be intentionally copied and sent to the switch CPU. And the last one, a packet is triggered by switch configuration. For example, you enable IGMP snooping or DNCP snooping, then these packets will be sent to the CPU. Okay, thank you. So now we know a little bit more about this part. Uh, uh, can you tell us about uh, VLANs and VLAN filtering? Sure, uh, VLANs allow you to configure multiple networks on the same physical hardware. You can isolate your clients, for example, IoT devices, IP cameras, on different networks and use uh, unique network policies for them. VLAN itself is only a 4-byte header and it is inserted in layer 2 packets. It contains a VLAN ID and when a bridge or a router receives these packets, uh, they can recognize the VLAN ID and make forwarding decisions. Okay, and uh, VLAN bridge VLAN filtering, uh, what does this feature do? Uh, with bridge VLAN filtering, uh, you provide VLAN awareness uh, to your bridge and you can modify uh, VLAN tags. For example, you can remove or add VLAN tag. Uh, the main setting is VLAN filtering. If VLAN filtering is disabled, the bridge ignores all the VLAN tags and it works in shared VLAN learning mode. It cannot modify VLAN tags. Turning on VLAN filtering enables all the VLAN related functionality and independent VLAN learning mode. Currently only uh, CRS 300 series and uh, some new switches support this in the hardware. Uh, software VLAN filtering is supported on all RotorOS devices. Okay, and uh, what's the difference between VLAN interface, bridge VLAN, switch VLAN? Um, this can be confusing because if you go to RotorOS, you can find VLANs at different places. For example, interface VLAN, bridge VLAN, switch VLAN. Uh, but they have some different purposes. For example, interface VLAN is mainly used uh, as a routable interface. You can add IP address and DHCP server and route traffic. Then there is a bridge VLAN. Uh, this is uh, a bridge VLAN table and you can create VLAN entries for your port membership. This table represents what VLANs are allowed for the bridge to forward. Access ports uh, configured with the port VLAN ID or PVID are dynamically added to this table as untagged members. Um, please note, you can also add bridge interface itself to this table. 
and uh, not all switches support VLAN filtering together with hardware offload, but they can still configure through the switch menu. So please check out the switch uh, chip manual for more details. Okay, and uh, how do we do on routers? How one can configure VLAN filtering? And is it possible to also create trunk and access ports? Sure, you can create trunk and access ports in RotorOS. Uh, in this slide, you can see all the main VLAN filtering commands. First, uh, you need to add a bridge interface. And please note, we recommend that you don't enable VLAN filtering right away because when you configure bridge ports, you can lose access to your device. And so we also recommend you to use serial port or dedicated management port. So next, you add trunk ports. It is recommended to enable ingress VLAN filtering and only accept target packets. Next, you add your access ports. You can set uh, access port default VLAN ID using the PVID setting. It is recommended to enable ingress VLAN filtering and accept only untagged packets. Next, you need to add the VLAN entries uh, for your trunk ports. The untagged access ports will be added dynamically due to port VLAN ID setting. Please note, we can also add bridge interface as a tagged VLAN member. This is useful when creating VLAN management access or inter-VLAN routing. Next, uh, you can add routable VLAN interface on the bridge and add IP address. Last, enable VLAN filtering. You can use VLAN print command to see all the available VLAN entries and host print to see learned MAC addresses and their VLANs. The next slide show a complete configuration uh, how to create a trunk port with three access ports. And this next example show how you can create an inter-VLAN routing configuration. Uh, see the bridge interface is acting like a trunk for the three VLANs. Uh, okay, uh, so next part we move on to the troubleshooting. Yeah, how can you actually troubleshoot all these uh, things? And first, uh, for example, how to detect if packets are even reaching the CPU? The most obvious way is to look at the CPU load. Uh, if you see uh, CPU load is getting 100%, it probably means your CPU is getting the traffic. Also, if your Winbox is getting unresponsive or device drops ping packets, it means uh, that some traffic is still getting to CPU. Um, next, um, sometimes CPU load can be minimal um, when you are testing your switch or the traffic is low. Uh, you can also look at Ethernet statistics and see if any interfaces are showing fast path receive or driver receive bytes. You see, if these counters increase, the packets are going to the CPU. Um, next, mm, even more useful feature is router sniffer. I personally use sniffer a lot because it can give me quite easily a lot of information for the packets. For example, you can start a quick uh, sniffer mode and see source address, MAC, uh, source and destination address. You can see VLAN ID and priority. You can see IP addresses and so on. Uh, there is no need to stream packets to your network analyzer or open a Wireshark, but you can still do that. You can save all the sniffed packets in a file and download to your PC. Uh, and please note, uh, the packets that are forwarded by the hardware will not show up in the switch sniffer. Uh, okay. And, um can I test, uh, how can I test if my VLAN configuration is working? Uh, sure, uh, the most obvious way is to configure an IP address uh, on your devices and ping devices uh, using ping. So, uh, however, I like to use Traffic Generator. Uh, traffic Generator allows you to create uh, packet templates. For example, most of the time I will create a broadcast packet template and start uh, packet uh, traffic generator to my switch and I can quickly see if the packets are sent to all the interfaces. The nice thing about broadcast is that switch will always try to send the packets to all ports and you can quickly see uh, if the switch VLAN configuration is correct. Uh, next, I have shared some of my favorite packet template examples 
I use multicast, broadcast. Uh, sometimes I need to create some random source MAC addresses. And you can even stack VLAN interfaces on top of each other and uh, create broadcast packet template on this uh, Q&Q interface. Another useful feature for the traffic generator is the quick mode. Uh, if you start the traffic generator in quick mode, it will show you a lot of useful information. For example, uh, send packets, received packets, and packet loss. Uh, okay, um, how can I protect my CRS uh, device uh, CPU from the rest of the network? Uh, you can do that in a couple of ways. The most common way is to use VLAN filtering and restrict VLAN boundaries. Uh, also, since router OS 6.48, uh, you can filter VLANs uh, that are allowed to enter the CPU. And previously, all the flooded traffic entered the CPU and you, um, you can only filter them by software. This was causing high CPU loads when network consisted of multicast streaming devices. However, now the bridge interface is mapped with the switch CPU port and you can filter traffic on the hardware. Next, you can configure ACL rules uh, to block unnecessary traffic. This can protect your switch and your network. Uh, does, your router, does your router only need to receive PPPO packets? Simply use ACL rule to block other traffic. Last, if a network loop has been created, a traffic storm can appear. And using CRS switches, you can use storm control to limit broadcast traffic. The, then now we can move on to some of your questions. Uh, uh, for example, a question from Kirill. If, if traffic congestion, uh, there is a traffic congestion, one gigabit interface, uh, how priority is assigned? Yeah, switches are using FIFO. Uh, there is no option to change the queue uh, technique. How can I set priority of the CPU switch? Um, currently, there are no option in the switch for the CRS300 to uh, actually take into consideration the priorities. Uh, the switch will try to forward packets by FIFO and um, you can do this on the CRS 100 and 200 switches but not on the CRS 300. Uh, how can I set priority on the switch CPU? Yeah, you can use uh, access control lists to change the VLAN priority but as I mentioned uh, CRS switches doesn't uh, take into consideration this VLAN priorities. Question from Soragan. Uh, bridge port PVID versus bridge VLAN untagged port. Why there are two places to set untagged? Yeah, um, if you set uh, PVID on the bridge port, it will be dynamically added to the bridge VLAN table. You can also manually set untagged ports in the VLAN table, but it is not mandatory. And you can also for example, you can untag multiple VLANs for, for the port. Is there a way to show bridge root changes in the log? Is, what is that? Um, currently, bridge doesn't have much uh, logging for the RSTP. Uh, we have a improvement uh, logged in our system. I hope we can make some logs in the future. But currently you can only see, um, for example, if the port changed status from forwarding to discarding and learning. And that's about it. Uh, okay, David Savage from South Africa is asking, will Routeros version 7 bridge VLAN filtering be combined with hardware, hardware, hardware layer 3 to build a type of layer 3 switch? Uh, it actually is already combined. Uh, you, you are creating, for example, if you are creating VLAN interfaces on the bridge, you need to enable VLAN filtering and then you can route traffic uh, in hardware using this configuration. All right, uh, so Kevin Myers is asking, will VX LAN be considered for hardware offloading in the CRS 300 series? 
Uh, at the moment, I cannot answer that because um, yeah, we hope we can make this possible, but I cannot promise that. All right. Uh, there was a question for mixing CCR, CCR with CRS, like using ASICs for the PPP connections. Yeah, uh, you can already see uh, CCR 2004. Uh, you have a switch chip and it has uh, VLAN, uh, VLAN filtering support in the hardware. Um, the new one, the 2004. The 16G. 16, yeah, 16G. 16G. And the... uh, uh, I don't know about newer CCR versions, but it might come with the better switch chips. Okay, which interface ARP mode will override port isolation settings? David uh, Gonzalez from Colombia. Hola, David. Uh, it must be local proxy ARP. Uh, because the local proxy ARP, uh, if I remember correctly, it, uh, it will always re reply on the local network with its own IP address. And it's, uh, it forces you to send traffic to the bridge and the bridge can, uh, bridge can uh, actually override port isolation when you are, you are using local proxy ARP. Okay, any more questions uh, about stacking? I think we've already told before, so currently stacking is not available. Now our devices will see whether we can, can do something about it in future, but uh, yeah, this is how it currently is. Hardware offloading for MPLS, uh, I think that we have, yeah. We have um, on the CRS 300 series, but not all of them. 317, and, I think, yeah? Yeah, 317. And it was a, a limited. Uh, you, there was, a, again, I am not an MPLS guy, but uh, there was uh, an option to hardware offload some of the MPLS functions. Does frame type setting on the bridge port override the frame type settings on bridge interface? Mohamed Razavi from Om Oman. Uh, actually, I don't know, it doesn't override. Uh, all the port settings are individual and if you use frame type setting on the bridge interface, it's only for the bridge interface. Remember that bridge interface is also acting like a bridge port, so you can control uh, frame types on the bridge. So does the traffic from ports 1 to 8 uh, going to ports 9 to 16 have to go through the CPU? Yes, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's the only way how they can pass. Yeah, the same as with 4011. Yeah. VPLS support on in hardware in CRS 300 switches. Again, uh, I'm not. I'm not very specified. I'm not like uh, the VPLS guy. Yeah, you need to write to the support, and I hope Aris will answer that. <laughs> um, yeah, but as Kevin, as you know, and we, not always we can tell you about but even even if we are looking into that direction, we not always can answer about things that we are not yet shipping. Um, which microtik router is bonding transmit hash policy will load balance layer three routed traffic most equally? David. Uh, yeah, it uh, it must be layer two and layer three. Uh, transmit hash. So Ushwil uh, from Philippines uh, is asking why VLAN mode names are not the same when you set on a bridge VLAN, switch OS and others. Uh, yeah, uh, these settings mm, basically they are historical. Um, not uh, every device was created at the same time and uh, there was these basic switch chips and we used the strict mode or the secure mode and they basically didn't, um, they are not the same, uh, the names doesn't like, we, we use different names, but uh, the functions are the same. So it can be confusing, we can try to improve this in future updates. Uh, I, I think, yeah, it's it's a great question and we need to like consistency, we need to ma make some consistency. All right, uh, Mario from Argentina is asking which is a better way to bond two VLANs using hardware offloading, which is the suggested way basically. You cannot hardware offload interface VLAN. These are 
only software interfaces. So that's not an option. But uh, you can use bonding with hardware offloading on the CRS 300 and you can use VLAN filtering with bonding as well. Weather is very cold today in Riga. The summer ended like a week ago. It's like plus 10, plus 15 every day. Uh, do you have a plan for implementing Cisco VTP or only a... Yeah, that one, Santiago. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, can you please ask this question to the support? Uh, I cannot answer that right away. Okay. Uh, why some switch port settings work without hardware offloaded bridge? Alexander Romanov. It's yeah, it's it could be on some uh, the basic switch chips that some of the hardware uh, some of the switch functions can work without the hardware offloading. Um, yeah, but uh, the 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 main the main principle is if you want to use the switch features, you need hardware offload. So uh, it doesn't make sense if you use software interfaces and use the hardware uh, features. Could you explain a little bit more about the port extender and controller bridge? Manuel is asking. Yes. Okay, yeah. Port extender and uh, port controller is similar to the Capsman. You add uh, new switches to your controller and these switches these interfaces show up on the controller, so you can manage the VLANs or RSTP on this controller. So it's pretty new feature. Uh, I would like to get some uh, updates how it's working and from you guys, uh, because a lot of uh, users are actually using it a lot at this moment. Miguel is asking which is the best way to limit traffic for a VLAN interface I mean, you can use bridge filter rules or firewall rules. Is there any restrictions for hardware offload when using 802.1x? Um, no, CRS support uh, this uh, dot one, dot, dot one .1x configuration in hardware offload. Uh, I'm not aware of limitations. GVRP. What is that? Generic VLAN registration protocol. Yeah, we haven't made any progress in RouterOS for that. At least I'm not aware of. Moez is asking, can I configure switch using Python script? Well, through the API, yeah, right? Sure, yeah, you can do so that. So we have, so that's already scripting and API. So API can be accessed through Python scripts as well. Yeah, so yes. You can, but well, you have to program it, of course. Newest question, if trunk port connected with other vendor switch, that switch does not allow VLAN 1. Uh, I don't really get the question. Uh, it, perhaps VLAN 1 is a default VLAN and it must be somehow untagged. Perhaps that's the issue. Uh, also, Bridge is using VLAN 1 for uh, its default VLAN ID. I'm confused from f about frame types ingress filtering in bridge. Is it only for the CPU port and has to, it has to be enabled on each bridge port? Uh, no, it's it's actually for uh, bridge ports. It's not. It can be used for CPU as well, but uh, you can use it for the bridge ports. And it's an extra filtering options. For example, in the frame types, you can select to accept only tagged packets. For example, if you have trunk port with a couple of VLANs and they only should send target, port, target traffic, you can set uh, admit only tag. And ingress filtering is additional uh, ingress filtering. For example, if you have a port, uh, it accept, uh, if you disable ingress filtering, it can be uh, that this port accept packets uh, for VLANs that it's not a member of. For example, these VLANs can leak into other ports. So it's recommended to enable the ingress filtering. And there are also, like in the bridge manual, um, there are some examples how you can use it. 
Okay, next question. How to set uh, PVID to dynamically added L2TP in bridge, Alexander? Uh, this currently is not an option. Yeah, you cannot do that. Uh, I hope we can improve this. Uh, I, I understand you want to use the bridge control protocol and it adds these PPP interfaces. But as I remember, there is no option to uh, use VLANs for these interfaces. So, yeah, it will not work correctly. Okay. Is, is it correct that frame type setting only works when you enable ingress filtering? Uh, actually, no, you can uh, enable them separately. However, most of the time you will use them together, but you can also only enable frame types or only enable ingress filtering. Okay, um, Michael is asking, I was uh, having a look at the Mac-based VLAN support and uh, if I understand that config correctly, it looks like it would leak broadcast on egress from multiple VLANs to those ports where, where Mac-based VLAN is used. Is this the case and is there any way to avoid this? This can happen, but uh, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you have one VLAN, one untagged VLAN, and you use the MAC uh, rules uh, or the ACL rules to apply VLAN ID for the correct MAC address. And when on, on the other direction, uh, switch will send these packets untagged. So you can have these different VLANs uh, on untagged. Uh, port, that's true, yeah. So the question is, what about microburst when upstream port speed is 10 gig and downstream is 100 meg? This can cause a problem uh, because uh, you have a congestion in your switch. Um, switch only have some finite number of resources. It cannot uh, absorb all the bursts. Uh, currently you don't have on the CRS, you cannot set uh, quality of service. You uh, you cannot prioritize one traffic on another traffic. So these micro bursts can cause a packet loss. There are some uh, options you can enable. For example, you can try out flow control. Uh, all right. Uh, one next question. Please explain the differences between egress filtering uh, and ingress filtering. What are the benefits? Um, yeah, ingress filtering it means that you uh, the switch uh, checks if the ingress port is also uh, the member of the VLAN. Uh, by default, in version six, uh, this ingress filtering was disabled, and so we recommend to enable it on all your configurations. Uh, but we changed this in the version seven. In version seven, the ingress filtering will be enabled at all times, and. Yeah, if the ingress filtering is disabled, uh, the bridge will check only the VLAN table when the packet is sent out. For example, if Ether1 is receiving VLAN packet uh, and it sees that Ether3 is a member of this VLAN, it will send packet to Ether3. So that's the difference. You can filter the packets faster in ingress filtering. Kevin is uh, continuing on the microburst topic. Uh, Cake and FQ Codel can help with microbursts. Will they be supported in hardware? Um, I don't think so, uh, but I have to check that. Um, I think there was only some uh, use like uh, random early drop. Uh, I don't think that Cake or Codel was supported in the hardware, but I have to check that. Yes, I believe when, if you turn on Horizon, the hardware offloading is disabled. Yeah, that's right. Uh, any plans for MAC address learn limit or lock? Yeah, this is a long asked feature. Uh, I hope it will be impl implemented in some, in some day. I, I reported this like two or three years ago. Uh, I'm still waiting. On CRS devices, is it better to do VLANs on the switch menu or bridge? Taking into account bridge is CPU. Uh, I mean, there are two CRS devices, the 100 and 200. 
you can do VLANs in the switch menu. Uh, they don't support VLAN filtering in hardware. CRS 300, they support VLAN filtering in hardware, so it's recommended to use that.